Okay, let's do another one. English versus Roos. Grandpasa versus Horror Hound. I like that name. Okay, this is a game that we're playing against the Roos. English against the Roos. On uh, French Pass. Okay. So, at the start of this game, we are ranked 11-18. And... Our opponent, I looked him up before this game started, and his, our opponent here does not have a 1v1 rating, uh, rating yet. But he does have 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 ratings. We, they, we do not know what his 1v1 rating is. Maybe he hasn't played the, uh, the 10 games necessary in order to get that rating. Okay, so we are playing against the Roos, and our job as, as the uh, opponent of the Roos is to deny him as much bounty as possible, so that's why we're trying to take away his 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 uh his hunts over here. Does he see me at this time? He does see me at this time. So he sees that we are fighting for all of the bounty in the middle. Yeah, look at how smart he is. Uh, maybe against the roost I should have opened up with two scouts so that I could just one-shot these deer. Instead, he's playing this game where he waits for me to take the shot, and then he'll go for he'll go for the shot in behind me, which is actually really smart. So I'm not that experienced as a roost player, and I'm not that experienced playing against the roost. So I might bungle up a couple things here and there. So he he forces me to to flee. I suppose I don't like this uh, this interaction. It's it's stressing my micro. Um, my multitasking, and so I just decide to get out of here, but I also do kind of sort of semi-abandon this. Okay, so they do get killed by the town center coming, so that's great. Alright, now where are my villagers? Oh, there, there they are. They're good. Alright, so, he's got 25 bounty so far. He's gonna come back around here for abilities, no doubt. The Roost player is... Searching the back of my base. Okay, so he's going for a second scout. As you can see, he's got a second scout out. He did manage to miss these two. And he did manage to uh, avoid picking these pills out. Well, I guess that makes sense because they're right underneath. They're really close to his base. He wants to go for all the hunts that are in the middle. I guess that makes sense to me. 13 12. We are at 13. Sorry, 13 1. And he's at 13-2, I believe. Okay, 13 villagers. All right, let's see here. We have, I think we we misspent just a little bit here. You can see how we have 230 gold. Uh, usually, I get to my gold mark right around uh, the time where I have enough here for 400 food to click up here to the council hall. So maybe I'm, I mistimed it by couple seconds, which actually, yes. in the early game, that's kind of a big deal. So, in the middle, you don't really see too much, uh, too much wildlife or sheep, except perhaps in the edges. So you don't really want to scout on, in the middle to catch pass. Okay. So, I failed to scout this. I failed to deal with these five villagers pressing through into into, uh, into my base, or to my section here. Has he clicked up to the next stage? He has not yet. So you notice he has not clicked up to the next stage yet. He's looking for food in order to do so. Yeah, I don't see this happening at all. <laughs> Alright, let's see what he does with these villagers. This is very risky, but he gets away with it. Perhaps I would have seen it if I had my double scouts. I would have been aware of it, perhaps. Could we have could we have walled this off with wood? Could we have walled this off with wood? And then uh, and then decide to push through later on and put stone on there maybe? Maybe that's maybe that's one what one has to do. Look at what this guy, he's very sneaky. I don't see this at all. 
I have no clue that this is taking any kind of place. See this? He's in the shadows. He's been completely unprotected. He's trying to hurt me here on the on the edge here. I do not see what he's doing whatsoever. Reveal map. What's taking place here? If he goes for a nice quick wall, he's gonna cut me off. Got the scout here. You see this? <laughs> he's building his Kremlin right here, the defensive landmark. He's going for some kind of uh, tower push. I like it because I do t I do tower pushes all the time. Tower rushes. So you can see that he's got he's got some some point lead here. Uh, even though I've made it to the next stage, oh now I do have the point lead. But I do believe that when he clicks up, he's going to have the point lead. So do I do I have extended line of sight over this? I do not. No, I do not have line of sight over this Kremlin that's coming down. It is going to come up un uncontested. Guess what? Look at tragically, I'm sending my longbows to the wrong side of the map for this. Very tragic. <laughs> Look at this. The Kremlin gets up without me knowing it, without me seeing it. Look at how many villagers I've got here, thinking that this is a nice, safe wood line. Thinking this is beautiful, nice and safe. The Kremlin has come up. My opponent has gotten to the second age, but I'm still a little bit far. He cannot, he cannot hit, uh, throw arrows at me yet. Uh oh, what's going on over here? Why are these guys coming in behind? Now I see it. Now it is seen, and I'm shocked. I remember being incredibly shocked to see what this was, and I just charge in here with all my villagers to see if I can do some damage and, and kill this. But it's got way too much, way too much HP. I decide, you know what? Never mind. And he does kill at least two of my villagers. And now I've got to abandon this woodline, which is too bad because it's my safest and closest woodline. Decent placement of this Kremlin, as far as I'm concerned. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna commit to this, that's a good spot. And look what he's doing in behind. I can't see any of this happening right now. But he's he's building a proxy base. Right in behind my own base. And here I am trying to stonewall everything that he's got. I'm trying to put stonewalls everywhere. Try to take control of the map, but he's already he's already planted his base right behind my Unreal. What a game. <laughs> what a game so far. Usually I'm the one who's doing things like this. I am not used to dealing with it from other people. That's good. As an English player, you have a, a lot of forward momentum in the beginning of the game, but Roos is taking it to me big time. I love it. I love the tactic. Win or lose, I appreciate. I appreciate creative and uh, and uh, risky gameplay. You know, take risks, take chances. I like that. It's very bold. I appreciate it. Okay, look at this. We have five villagers here. I'm just spotting it out now. What's he up to? What's he gonna do with these five villagers? He's denying me even this one over here. I'm trying to kill his scout with these villagers. These villager archers. Yeah, see? I mean... He's got... He's got these wooden fortresses, they're very strong. What does he have here? Increase the damage of arrows. Fired from this wooden fortress by plus two. Okay, so he's got arrow slits. He's researched arrow slits in both of these here. Is this researchable? Only in the castle age. Spring of the placements. Okay. So, this is just a total mess. Total and complete mess on my end over here. Big fat base in my base, basically. Um, we've got we've got archers that are streaming through. I can't see them quite yet. I do. I don't think I know that there's an archery range behind here. I don't know this. I'm trying to complete this, um, you know, taking taking control of the map, but I, I really don't control the map because this guy is right in my base, and he can build armies and he can do whatever he wants from on the other side of these walls. So I am I'm very stressed right now. My my game it is not allowed to develop naturally so this is a really bad deal so we have 25 villagers and 7 military our opponents on 34 villagers and 8 so 
just a massive, massive advantage. I mean, he's got he's got just a, a huge percentage uh, more mili uh, more villagers than me. So this is not a good time. He's prevented me from from touching these wood lines completely. He's taking my wood from over here, and he's basically he's basically developing just unharassed, unbothered by anything that's taking place right now. It's a good spot to be in, as far as I'm concerned. If I were poor hound over here in red. So we've closed him off. We've closed him off from his main base on both the north side and the south side. It's complete. But I have, I have a massive problem, and my problems are only getting bigger. You can see that he is, has he researched? Where's the blacksmith? Here's his blacksmith. Okay, so he's researched, he's researched um, siege engineering. He's researching the plus one uh, range of damage. Because he's investing into you into archers, lots of archers. You can see you can see how he's got a, a, an abundance of food and wood. And I've got hardly any villagers. I've got for a, for a while there I had hardly any villagers on food. Or or at least there was no food available. So here we come. Here the rams come. I'm only just seeing them now, and I'm only just seeing the archers now. How do we deal with this? Okay, we're at 28 villagers. Rams? They're, they're building crushers, but they're also villager killers. The, re the big reason why you want to have rams is to shoot down the villagers that try to burn them down. Gain a big economic advantage by doing that. So he's got three rams. He's trying to end the game now. Honestly, if these were long, if these were English longbows, because I I do this attack all the time. If these were English longbows, then this would be a crippling, crippling attack. Absolutely. When you have this kind of setup over here, if this was the English, if I were playing as the English, and this these towers were giving me some kind of um, attack boost, a, a, an attack buff, absolutely, this would be a crippling attack. I'm sitting now at 23 villagers. He killed a good few of mine there. 23 to 41. He's got nearly double the villager count that I've got at this time. This is just, I remember thinking, this is just unwinnable. To try to play this conventionally is not possible. And he's being very aggressive. He's trying to get in here with a winning. He does. He does mismanage that a little bit there, losing three of his five villagers that need forward villagers. This is a good idea to put this wood fortress up over here. Let's see, what kind of- look at the resource count that he's got! Look at all these resources! 740 food, 900 wood, 400 gold, more stone than me too, like, and a bigger army. Let's see, 25-13 to me, 25-13 to me, they got 39. 17 for him. Oh, and then now he goes for it. Now he's he's not afraid. He is not afraid of these uh, of of the archer fire. He's trying to kill my villagers. He's got his scouts in in play as well. This is not good. Village account, 23 village account. I'm trying to. I only have one person on food right now. Like my economy is being totally disrupted by this. I'm getting some good hits off with my archers. My archers are doing a decent job at, the, at this time. They've got just amazing range of damage. But as you, I mean, look at this. I mean, I've got all these villages working on these rams over here, and I'm having a tough time bringing it down. Too bad that he lost all his archers in that attack. Otherwise, he would have sent all of my villagers to the grave. I'm at 22 villagers, 16 army. And he's got 38 and 1. I think he has stopped producing. For some reason, he has stopped producing villagers. He could have gotten into the 40s by now. 50s by now, if he had continued. So, now we can, you can take a look. I've completely run out of wood. No, insufficient wood. You can see that. Insufficient wood. I've got one villager working on wood down over here. That's because the blacksmith is going up. I'm going to try to kill, the, kill these towers. Clear up my base a little bit. But the damage has been done. 
Massive, massive villager losses. Loss in time. Loss in development. This guy is allowed to develop un completely unharassed. Now he is remembered to go and get himself some uh, some villager production over here. Just he's got a huge abundance of wood. See him. Oh man, the damage has been done. Even though he failed to finish off this game, probably if he would have gotten a double a double um, archery range and just had like you know ten or twenty more archers. Or maybe if he had come in with a barracks or a stable, okay, to help clear out these longbows, then this attack would have absolutely been a game winner. It would have been totally over. But fortunately, we held over there. But it still looks terrible. It still looks absolutely horrible. I mean, look at my economy. It's 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 in a complete mess. Look at this. 350 food versus eight, oh, 900 food, basically. Yeah, Look at this. He's got five times as much wood. He's got four, three times as much uh, gold, four times as much. This is this is a big problem. And I only have one safe wood liner bringer for now, right? But look what he's forced me to do. By doing this, now he's forced me to drop this blacksmith. He's forced me to research siege engineering. He's forced me to make at least one battering ram. This is a massive, massive drain to my economy to try to deal with this. See? What do we have over here? Yeah. And so now he's trying to push through. See, I'm, I'm not loving that. That tells me he wants to be aggressive. We're sending one ram. We don't have enough wood for two rams. We got the villagers that are trying to spray fire on this uh, see, uh, on this battering ram. You can see it's already taken taken about 10% of, uh, of damage already. And this uh, this wooden fortress is reaching us. This is really good range. What kind of range do we have here? It's got very decent range. Let me check the range on this thing. Can I? Yeah, eight eight tiles range. Eight Black tiles range, guard, whereas guard. I have seven seven range guard, on the long moment. So I back off because I can't kill these guys with just one ram. It's be it's full on. Look at that. Look at all my idle villagers here. Hester's commanding. Okay, you can see that I dropped down here. Since we've lost this wall, since basically I anticipate losing this wall right now. I have to, I have to make this. This, this area is now very compromised, and I have to go do something about it. Oh, we have the villagers are fleeing. His villagers are fleeing. Why is this yes, guy doing this and not placing? He's not placing these things down. So the villager has fleed the scene. He's abandoned this uh, this area, but the damage has totally been done. Look at the point score right now. The point score, he's up like 1,200 points. Yeah! Yeah! He's in the third age, he can start building... Uh, he can start building siege weapons now. Manganels, especially. He can start upgrading his units. This is not great, especially when you're the English, because the English relies a lot, uh, especially in H2 on longbows and spears. And if you're playing an opponent in H3 with access to Manganels and other advanced units, then that's gonna be a that's gonna be a tough time. So I, I'm not loving my game. It's <laughs> it's tough. We know that. We recognize that. Look at all of these. Look at all these markets. He's put two markets down. So, slowly, very, very slowly are we working on clearing off the base here, our opponent's proxy base. And what is our opponent up to now? Okay, so he's trading. Horror Hound here is trading, doing lots of that. 56 villagers compared to 37. So he's got, what was that, 37 to 56? 
here. He's got a 19 villager lead right now. 19 villager lead after 20 minutes in the game. That's that's very significant. All right. Let's see the resource count here. You see that we have a, an overabundance of food over here, and that's why I'm moving a whole bunch of villagers off for gold. It's too bad that we didn't do this a little earlier on, so that we could meet at 1,200 food and 600 gold at roughly the same time to be able to age up in the most efficient manner possible. You see now that we have a 1,400 point difference. We're still trying our best here with the villager production. Now you can see, you can see now that our opponent is trying to consolidate his position now. What does he see? What can he see? He sees this. Okay. He sees the stone wall. He's putting down a cape, which I think is pretty smart. He's in the castle after all. And yeah, he's got knights. I mean, he's game. got he's got heavy That's cavalry like coming down to the middle. Okay, so now we've killed that, and now he's taking a look. He's taking a look at our army composition, of course, because because of course he can see what's attacking his buildings. And this was pretty smart for him to to show up with knights. All right, let's see here. He's got 59 and 12. We are at 42 and 24. So now it's a 17 villager lead. So we're trying to gain on him, and now you see that we've we've put down all of these barracks over here, anticipating a possible push here from our opponents with his knights. This guy's just working on all his. You can see, I can I can see the knights streaming through. I have an idea of what's coming. All right, let's see. How many production? Okay, look at that. He's already put down. He's already put. I'm not even in H3 yet. I haven't even clicked up to the third age. Oh, I have, and he's already clicking up to the fourth age. This is just brutal for me. You can see the difference now. You can see you're about to see the difference in uh, in, in point count when this guy gets up to the imperial. Right now, it's about a 1,200 point lead for him. But once this high armory building comes down, landmark comes down. Oh man, let's see what the point score will be. We've taken out one of his <laughs> landmarks already from his push. Oh, brutal. Got a charge attack. He hasn't occupied the middle quite yet. Only now are we closing up this section over here. He could have actually walked once he once he breached these walls. He could have walked around here and come around, snaked around the middle, and then come into my base from the other side. I think that would have been that would have been game over for me if I had not if I had not closed that up. Siege workshop, high armory. Okay. All right. So where are his landmarks? We know that he we know that he's got four landmarks. One's under construction, so one's, one's destroyed, the Kremlin's destroyed. He's got the town center here, he's got the monastery here. Trade house, and the armory. For some reason, when I was looking at this thing, I thought it was, uh... I thought it was the Abbey of the Trinity. Does the Abbey of the Trinity kind of look like this? I feel like one could one could be mistaken in, in thinking that like at first glance that this might be the Abbey of the Trinity landmark. All right, so now we we're looking at a 17 point lead for our opponent here. 68 villagers and 18 military compared to how many do I have? 57 and 29. So we're coming back here. That's probably because we have basically have two town centers. Two. Two town center landmarks. But now you can see that his score is more than double mine. It's about double mine at this time. Just a crippling, crippling uh, attack here in the early game when he did this tower push with his Kremlin. 
just an absolutely crippling attack. Now, you can see that he, he's used his warrior monk to go and take control of this one sacred site over here. He has access to this other sacred site, which would put me on a timer for a landmark, uh, for a sacred site victory. He also, now that he's into the middle, he has access to four out of the five relics. One here, one here in the middle, one there in the corner. I know that there's one on my side that I have behind my walls, but I'm not seeing the other one. Oh, here. No. I've already counted that. There's a f there is a fifth relic somewhere on here. Maybe he's already taken it in. Is it possible? Doesn't seem so. Okay, well. We'll look for that. Okay, okay. so now we can see that all these cavalry units are now charging. See what they see. Does he have a warrior monk among them? No, he doesn't. It doesn't seem so. No, he doesn't. But he is colonizing the middle. Okay, let's see. Yeah, here you see he's doing a lot of trading. Tons of trading now. Let's take a look at one of those markets to see how many traders he's got. Total active traders, he's got 10 active traders. So now he can see, yes, now he can see my stone walls. You can see those. Alright. Going for a little raid, but he does not push through. He did get he did spot out the stable though. Interesting that he spotted that out. In fact, he might have been able to get a little bit better view if he had parked himself up in me. I'm not sure. Sometimes you can get little glimpses of your opponent's sort of activities when you do that. Now we are starting to see. Oh, he has he has upgraded his knights to elite knights now. He has also employed some horsemen to come out into the field. We are at 79 villagers, 31 military units for a horror hound. 79, 34. Okay, all right. Compare that to me at this time. 7340. So we are trying to come back over here, but we're still, you see, we're still on the third age. Our opponent has still got double the points that I've got. Double. He's got elite troops. I've only got veteran troops. And I've just got simple longbows. I haven't even upgraded them to the veteran. Oh, uh, so I can tell that this is not a good position for me. I'm trying to use this. Uh, the, the King's Palace, this double town center to try to come back economically. It's not looking good. I'm not a happy camper now. Uh, and I've been in this position. This guy's going to try to grab a relic, I think. Yeah, he's going for this relic that's down here. You can't see it right now, but... I know what's coming. And if you can see here... I remember spotting this out here. Watching, watching this enemy's ram taking out the last of my walls and I can see that he's got siege units coming through and I, I've got no siege units on the field whatsoever right now so let's let's do a take here of the whole map you can see how the opponent's military units are stationed here readying themselves for the eventual final invasion what does my opponent have here? He's got three three thousand food. Three thousand food <laughs> leads me to believe that maybe he's trying to gear up for a possible uh, uh, a possible wonder or something like that. Look at this, forty two hundred point lead for my opponent. So I know that I'm stuck in the third age. I think I'm just gonna stick in the third age, try to fight this thing out uh, here. Um, and you see, look at all this. We have how many? Twelve. We've got twelve stables trying to trying to mass produce on these on these uh, scouts. These are all scouts. So far, there's about fifty something scouts here. I've got eighty-seven villagers. Am I producing any more villagers in this? Yes, I am. I'm trying to catch up here economically, um, but in terms of tech, I'm not going to be able to. This guy's already in the fourth age, and he's streaming out siege units. 
how what is this what is the enemy's population count right now? There are 139. So we've overtaken him in in, uh, in villager count. He stopped his villager count, which I think was a mistake. Um, and and he's instead just started to produce siege units to bring to the front over here uh, to try to go after that final final last and final push. He's got his keep that he's put down. Really, this was a mistake that he did capture the circuit site and force me to do something. And now you can see. Now we are starting. I don't think he sees any of this. No, he hasn't scattered out any of this whatsoever. He does not have a line of sight beyond um, beyond this point. Yeah, he only has he he only has line of sight in the south. You can see how he's preparing for this attack. He's rounding his troops here. And now you can see we are going for the diversion. This is a this is a diversionary attack. We know uh, that we have all of these troops stationed here, and that they so far they haven't been seen. And this is a total diversionary attack. Let's take a look at the entire map to see if we can if we can see anything at all. And let's take us into cinematic mode. This is. This is a diversionary attack. We're being attacked by these trebuchets. Common, what, what kind of numbers do we have here? Let's see. 21 longbows, 2 rams, and 15 spears. So these will do some damage. But he is not paying attention to the mass that is forming on his northern front. We're taking the scout here to see if there are walls that need to be taken down. There are no such walls. He is streaming all these fighters to come into this area over here to try to finish off this little diversionary attack. He doesn't know it's a diversionary attack. For all he knows, this is the real deal. And now we have begun. We have begun. The landmark snipe with 78 villagers after taking care of, after producing, uh, he's still taking care of these rats. He doesn't know that he's being attacked, his landmarks are being totally attacked right now. He doesn't see it. He has what? He has two elite knights here that are trying to do something about it. And now, I believe, now he sees it? No, he's still rallying his troops. Oh, he, <laughs> he still has troops rallying to the front, but he needs to get in behind. I waste so much time taking down this monastery, not thinking, totally not thinking that that was that wasn't the uh, whether or not that was the Abbey of the Trinity. But, but we have taken down the town center. He's trying to heal it back up. We are taking out this high trade house. There's only one landmark left. Only one landmark. Look at the score count. He's more than double the score count that I have. How much do we have here? 59 villagers. We are trying to stream in we are trying to stream, uh, stream in scouts, but they're stuck over here. They're not attacking this. Okay, now they're coming through. Now they're coming through. This high armory. He's trying to heal it up. He's trying to kill the scouts, and it's game over. It's game over. We look at the score. We're less than half the score of our opponent. We're stuck in the third age. He's in the board. He's got elite troops, and we've got nothing but scouts. The diversionary attack work, allowing us to come through the back door and land Mark Snipe for the victory. What a game. What a game.